Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to crush bases with Queen Charge Hogs. Now the army that you can see on screen, just scroll along a little bit there, that is my standard Queen Charge Hog army. It's what I've used for quite some time in Legends League, on and off. I, I don't use it all the time, but um, when I go Queen Charge Hogs, this is my go-to. So it's really similar to a hybrid comp with spells, the troops are kind of similar. The only difference is of course we've got no miners and we've just got a load of hogs. So um, yeah, why do I think this is better than Queen Charge Hybrid? Well, if I'm being completely honest, I don't think it's better. I think it's different and it's more suitable for different base styles. So with this, you're more likely to get better value from it if you can get a base that you can uh, either manipulate or has already got ready-made great pathing for hogs between defenses so remember hogs only target defenses so um, yeah if you've got a base with loads of defenses lined up in a row you can just send those hogs in they will go to town and they will wreck the base obviously if you haven't got the defenses lined up the attack can still work you just need to do a little bit more work with your queen charge and your flame flinger and your king just to manipulate that pathing and get yourself ready to deploy the hogs so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you a few attacks today i'm going to talk through them before we press play on them just so you've got a good understanding of why i do what i do and then hopefully by the end of it you'll uh, be able to take this attack into your own legends league or war hits and at least have some success with it. I'm not going to promise you're going to be an expert right away, but uh, I reckon with a bit of practice and a little bit of know-how, you'll be smashing bases in no time. All right, so the first base that we're going to be hitting is this one from my clanmate, Atom. So, how are we going to break this one down? So first, thing, first things first, I think we've got to really think about what we're going to do as far as the standard approach to this attack, and based on that standard approach, how we can try and force it on the base. So the reason why I want to go with a standard approach is because it's always best to learn like a sort of like a benchmark level or a base level of how to do the attack. And then you can tweak it as you like later on. But for me, the standard of this attack is to try and take down the town hall with either a queen charge or your flame flinger and use the flame flinger to take out the other part of the funnel. So when you're looking at hogs, it's a little bit different to when you're looking at funneling for a smash attack, for example, like Super Bowlers. With a Super Bowler smash, you want to try and create a entry point in between the uh, Warden Walk, as it would be, or the Queen Charge and the Flame Flinger. So, for example, you have the Queen Charge here, Flame Flinger there, you'd send your smash in through the middle. We don't want to do this with Hogs. What we want to do with Hogs is we want to take out a complete side of the base before we send the Hogs in. So we're actually looking more like trying to take out all of that. That's what we're looking to try and do. So how do we do that? First things first, I'm going to look to identify where I'm going to get the best value from my Flame Flinger. So given that I don't carry a Skeleton Spell or a Quake in this army comp, there's no easy way of activating the Town Hall. And tr it is true that if we do get a uh, Fireball onto this Wizard Tower, it could potentially activate the Town Hall, but I'm not gambling on that. It's not worth the risk, and if it doesn't activate the Town Hall, the Town Hall ain't going to go down. So that process of elimination means that we're going to have to charge the Town Hall down. And that means the Flame Flinger in that case will be coming in from 6 o'clock. So Flame Flinger from 6 is still going to get a ton of value. It's going to take out there, 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 and keep going. It's going to keep moving on through and just picking off targets until it runs out of life. Okay. So, with the Flame Flinger, it's always worth sending in something as a tester to start with. So, if we're starting off at 6, we want to send in, I don't know, maybe a balloon. I like sending in balloons right from dead on 6. Get that to move over towards the Arch Tower. If a Tesla pops up, great, we can deal with that early. If it doesn't, then you know what? We know we're safe at least. We know that Flame Flinger isn't going to take any damage. Okay, so we've got the Flame Flinger bit down. Queen Charge. Now, we're looking at the entry point here. We do have an open wall, but the Queen's very difficult to get through those open gaps, guys. So I'm not even going to try to do that. It's risky and chances are she'll just walk off. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to drop the Queen here. And because I can see we've got an Elixir Storage there and a Wizard Tower there right by the wall, what I can do, I can send a Wall Breaker in and it will open up that wall. 
So the first one may go here first to the arch tower, but the second one definitely will open up the wall here. It's far enough away from the gap, and it's also got structures really uh, directly adjacent to it. So that wall breaker will work. So our queen is going to get dropped in here. We'll get the healers on her, and she's going to charge through to the town hall. While that's happening, we're also going to drop a baby dragon here and get that to clear up some of these structures over here. And the reason why we're doing that, of course, is to make sure the queen doesn't have a reason to, instead of going into the town hall, walking up and around. So, uh, yeah, that's the entry. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to manage the queen charge as you would with any queen charge, rages and freezes to keep her alive. Uh, also using your poison appropriately as well. It's standard stuff. I'm not going to insult you by over explaining that side of it. So by this point, we've taken out, let's fast forward a bit, we've taken out all of this. All that's gone, probably taken out, mm, no, we don't actually take out this multi yet. So we've taken out all of this. That's what we've done so far. So what we've got left here, guys, is that. That is what we've got left all in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to be sending our hogs, our warden, our RC, and potentially our headhunters. We'll see. I actually don't think I do, to be honest. But uh, yeah, the headhunters are there for the uh, for the using, so use them if you want. We're going to send them all in from this side. And the reason why I chose that side to send them in from is because there's a lot of concentrated defences around here. Arguably more in this side than there is if we were to go for this entry point. And what I'm looking to do is get those hogs powering through and use that early warden ability to protect them moving through the multi-infernos. Um, so granted we do have a back end scatter shot to deal with, but I'm hoping we can handle that with a freeze spell or something, but whatever. Either way, the hogs and everything are gonna, gonna push through here. They're gonna work their way up. Hogs won't live forever. They will end up dying off before the attack ends more often than not, but they do enough to protect your royal champion um, to basically finish the job. So they will tank for the royal champion while also doing a significant amount of damage themselves. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's a really quick run through. It's not a quick run through, actually. I've been talking for a few minutes, so I'm going to shut up now and we're just going to press the play button. Go. Okay. So we have the flame fling it down with the balloon moving ahead of it. So that balloon looking for Teslas. The queen, you can see her over there where we talked about over at eight o'clock. Super Warbreaker moving in, opens up the town hall compartment and that baby dragon just subtly clearing away over on the nine o'clock side we've got a wizard in to help out as well i was a little bit concerned i mean to be fair that wizard actually contributed nothing but i was hoping that wizard would take out the gold mine so the queen wouldn't have to walk up queen now on the town hall so town hall goes down first and she's then going to start working away on these structures around the outside we are going to pull the cc soon so we are going to have to be ready with our poison and probably a free spell because that's sweeper Expo and Warden, really nasty combo. So we've got a King working with the Flame Flinger, of course, that's to try and deal with the RC that's buried in that six o'clock compartment. And you can see the value that we're looking to get here, the uh, the path that we're carving, it's actually looking really, really strong. So I could have sent a Coco in in, in a little bit uh, earlier than I did, or oh, actually I didn't send one in at all, but I could have sent one in, because we did just lose a, a, a healer to a Seeking Air Mine, but not a huge deal. We've got four healers still up, and the Queen's done most of the work we need to the two. So Hogs move in, we drop a Freeze on the Multi and the King, so I don't want to use the Eternal Tome yet until I have to. So the Eternal Tome's going to go off when we get slightly deeper into the base. One thing to look out for with this attack as well, guys, something that really frustrates me is the Warden's AI. He does sometimes let the hogs get away from him before a few seconds later he catches up with them. And by that time, half of them are already dead. So if you do want to use that Warden's ability quite early on, go for it, guys. Go for it. It's better to use it too early than not get to use it at all. So the Queen Charge is still going on. So this is all um, testament to how well we've managed that Queen Charge, using the spells efficiently but effectively. The Hogs, we've still got a few of them working away up to the top side. RC's ability is forced and the Expo is going to go down. Hogs are going to move in towards the Scatter and boom, a giant bomb damages them. Doesn't quite finish them, but the Bomb Tower does. Yeah, Bomb Tower toasts them. Damn, rough. But you can see here, guys, we've got a few Swag Troops, we didn't need all of our troops here, guys. And uh, we've got plenty of time left over. I think this attack took about two and a half minutes, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, it wasn't even close to failing. 
And yes, like I said, we didn't have any hogs left by the end of it, but that's that's not what these attacks are all about. It's not like a hybrid where you expect to have a ton of miners left over. The hogs are there to punch a massive hole in the opponent's defences and allow an easy cleanup job for whatever's left. So the queen charge, the RC, the king. And you know what? If you've got some hogs left over, brilliant. Just don't be too hard on yourself if you don't when you try this. And up next, we have our token attack on Putty. This is the last full walkthrough that I'll give. Um, I don't want to bore you guys with too much talking. We want more action as well, of course. But I'll try my best to talk through the attacks as we do them for the final two after this. Okay, so we're going to break this base down in a similar way. We want to build a path that means that we've got a nice clean route for our hogs to follow. So the path that jumps out at me immediately is one that sort of looks like this. We can build that path in really easily here by taking out that comp, that comp, and that comp. Really, really simple. And we can do that with three different, so it's like a three-pronged assault here. So we're going to do the Flame Flinger on that one. And I chose that one for the Flame Flinger because we've got no Expos nearby. We can easily take out that Mortar that would be a threat. And essentially with Mortars and Expos not in the way, it's a really simple job of using that Flame Flinger to just drop it, let it roll. You, you don't need to pay attention to it really. In this compartment, we'll send in the King. And over in this compartment... It's the queen. Of course, the queen gets the biggest job. She's the most capable and she is using up what, five healers. So come on, come on. She's got 70 housing space with her. So if she can't take down that comp, what is she even doing with her life? So what we'll do then, guys, we'll drop the a balloon and a minion on this mortar. So post update, there is going to be an update soon. So if you're watching this after the update, you may need to use two balloons on the mortar. Maybe. I'm not sure yet, but that's probably the case. So the old one balloon, one minion trick on a max mortar probably won't work anymore. So you may need to experiment a little bit, but I boy, take out that mortar, try and do it as efficiently as you can. In hindsight, you could probably even do it by maybe even dropping in, I don't know, just a wizard right here or something, I guess. But whatever, take it out, drop the flame flinger over here, and that will easily take out everything in there. Next step is that we want to drop in our queen. So we want that queen dropped in here. And we want to use a super wall breaker to open up this wall right here. So the queen's going to just start chipping away at these structures around here. She'll take them down. But because there's nothing in particular that's going to pull her wide, she should go straight in. So just as a safety play, and also because we have to do this anyway, we're also going to be dropping our king in here. And the king's going to take out the barracks, the mortar, the builder hut. And then because we're going to be smart and we're going to drop a baby dragon over here, or a wizard, whichever, whatever you fancy, the king is not going to choose to walk up. He's going to start attacking this compartment here. And eventually he'll work his way through to the scatter. So you don't need to watch your king too much. Also to suggest doing is when the king's starting to get a little bit low on health, fire off that king ability. And if you feel like you can get value from it, also consider freezing some of the high impact defenses. So maybe the Scatter and the Warden or Scatter and Expo, whatever, see, whatever you feel like, guys, whatever. But just make sure that King can get maximum value in that compartment. And yeah, the Queen's going to be charging through here. It's going to be a really easy run for the Queen. So we've got the single Inferno. It's a minor threat. We can get through that of a rage and a freeze spell. No big deal. And what I love about this queen entry is that we've got no sweepers pointing in this direction. So we've got sweepers going that way and that way. So we're not going to get any undue pushback on the healers for the queen. So she will get maximum protection throughout. And then from there, guys, we've got two choices. We can either send the hogs in from this way or we can send them in this way. Doesn't really matter which one. I prefer this entry, I think, now I'm looking at it, just because it's a narrower entry. You're going to get more of a concentration of those hogs on these uh, tightly grouped defenses, and they're going to just stick together pretty well throughout. We do have that core, which is a bit of a pest, but it'll be dealt with, don't worry, guys. We've got so many hogs. We've got the RC. We've got no issues. Um, and yeah, 
hogs RC wooden, they will shred through this part of the base quite easily. If you're wondering why we send the RC with the hogs, by the way, given that it also is a uh, defensive targeting hero, the main reason for that, honestly, guys, is that the RC is a great utility hero. So not only will it target defenses and help to speed up those takedowns for the hogs, but, but... It's also going to be really useful when trying to take on these defending heroes. Defending heroes that could be a real menace otherwise. The RC will absolutely crush them, especially with the hogs tanking for it. Anyway, let's press play so you can see how this one played out. So we've got the balloon and minion dropped in. If that does change and it doesn't become viable anymore, I'm going to be kind of sad. I got unused to doing that. It, it's become a really efficient takedown device for me. But whatever. So we've got the wall break in, the queen's in, the king is in play as well. And the baby dragon gets dropped in. So king is going to try and bust through the wall to the archer tower. Uh, we've got the queen moving in towards a single rage down, freeze down. We captured the king in that freeze as well. Didn't really gain any extra value from it because I think the queen would have got the single before the king moved in on her anyway. But better safe than sorry. And king is moving through. So Fired off his ability, he was a little bit low on health there, so he fired it off, throws up the scatter, and the scatter shot is going down. Perfect. I think... No. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I thought the king had taken out the headhunters, so I kind of screwed up a little bit here. I should have waited for the hound to get closer, because I did drop that freeze down on the two headhunters, and what I was hoping would happen is that they'd be locked in place and the queen had just quickly picked them off before the hound moved in. Didn't quite work out that way, but it's not a disaster. Just maybe I wasn't as efficient as I could have been. Okay, so Queen moving through towards the Town Hall. So you'll notice on the clock, we don't have that much time left. We've got a minute and 18 seconds left before the replay ends. Of course, it wasn't a three minute attack, so we did have plenty of time to spare. But what I'm really highlighting here is a minute and 10 seconds, these hogs now start to move in as soon as that Town Hall's gone down. And that... That basically means, guys, that all you need is just over a minute. I, I wouldn't follow that as a complete rule. It's not an absolute rule on every base, but you need about a minute to a minute and a half for those hogs to do their thing, as long as you're getting the same sort of value that I am here. So what we've got in the Flame Flinger, by the way, I haven't pointed this out before. You may have noticed it on the last attack, but we have five Valks and a Giant in there. And the reason why I take them in is because, well, you can see, they, they can rush in and they can get significant value. Unfortunately, on this occasion, they actually didn't, so the Queen sniped them all off. But um, typically, if you've got the Flame Flinger popping on the outside and there's loads of cleanup buildings to uh, get rid of, then, uh, yeah, those Valks will shred. They will really speed up the attack, but those Valks didn't really do anything there, to be fair. Anyway... We've got the RC working through the Eagle. The RC actually shortly, uh, not too long ago took care of the Queen, which kind of backs up what I was saying to you before, guys. The RC is a great hero to have moving with the Hogs because otherwise that Queen would have been sniping those Hogs down. They would not have survived that. And there we have it. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. We have a three star with a Swag Queen ability. Again, Swag and Queen abilities, it's, it's not the most efficient, but you know what, if you can get away with it, you know that you've had a really strong Queen charge at that point. So uh, yeah, hopefully all that made sense. That's all the heavy explaining that we're going to do. Now we'll get into a couple more replays, and I'll just talk through them as we go along. As promised, we're going to do a couple of hits as well without over-explaining it. I mean, I don't consider it over-explaining. I actually think that everything I went through there is serve to educate you and hopefully it's helped so what we're doing here guys we're looking to try and take down this top half of the base so try and take down all of that so all of that to go away and what we're going to do you can see it's already starting off so we've got the flame flinger over at 12 o'clock we've got the queen moving in here to take down all of this area and of course she can reach over the wall and take that out too what you're probably wondering here guys is why I'm targeting the Town Hall here with the Flame Flinger. I've got nothing to activate it with. There's no uh, Skeleton Spell, there's no Quake. So how am I going to activate it? Well, the Flame Flinger, the shots from it kind of deviate by, I think, about a tile or half a tile. So you will, as long as you've only got a defense that's only maybe one tile away from the Town Hall, 
you should get activation on it with one of the plane flinger shots. So that's happened there. Perfect. Okay. So we've got the queen working her way through that nine o'clock compartment. And we're looking to try and build it because you can probably see this already. But we're looking to try and build the path that works through here. That's the path we're looking for. Really nice straight line for the hogs. It's... I mean, to be fair, you can get away with not doing a straight line. If you can build the pathing enough and take out enough high value defender defenses, you could do like a curved path with the hogs. But there's no point doing that if we can easily take out that 9 o'clock comp. Plus, there's way too much DPS on defense to try that. So we just want that really simple straight line and the hogs can now move in. So we're going to go hogs, RC, warden, headhunters to deal with that king and early eternal tome. We're moving into an area with plenty of open ground here, so I suspected there'd be giant bombs, and there were. We took the brunt of damage from one of them, so easily fixed with a heal spell, the headhunters move through and try and get rid of that queen. Don't get the job done, sadly, but that's why we have the RC with our hogs, my friends. That's why we carry them. So, uh, yeah, we're looking to get through this pretty, pretty easily here. The base is getting ripped apart actually really quickly, really quickly. Um... So you'll notice I've used a couple of free spells on the scatter shot that was here. Why did we do that? Why didn't we freeze up the multi in the core? Well, that's because the scatter shot can damage an infinite number uh, number of troops. So however many troops are stacked up on top of each other, that's how many the scatter shot will hit. The multi inferno will only hit six troops, and I'm telling you, the scatter shot hits harder than any other defense in the game. So you want to use your freezes on those scatter shots. They are the biggest threat. Uh, but yeah. Really simple job, guys. We got the job done. We swag queen ability again. I'm too efficient with my queen charges, I'm telling you. But uh, yeah, really simple. So all we're looking to do, I keep saying really simple. I'm, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Big Vale, that wasn't that simple. But it is when you break it down. Take out half the base with a queen charge, with your king if you want to, with your flame flingerer and just power through the rest of it with your hogs. Those hogs, you can count on them to get the job done. They are not super robust, but they hit hard, and when they swarm around these defenses, there's no way they're going to stand up against them. And for our final attack of the video, we have what is actually a really common base. I saw this base probably twice in the last CWL in Champs 1, and I have actually come across it in Legends several times too. Now, some of the defenses are low level, but the ones that matter aren't. The ones that matter are maxed out. That's my excuse for this not being completely crushing. But um, what we're looking to do here is try and break away into the town hall. So we get that CC pull with the super wall breakers. I just about managed to get through without losing the queen ability. Just about. That was really, really tight. But my idea here is to try and break into the town hall. So we're trying to get through, get the town hall down. We're going to get rid of the single inferno just here. And um, we're then actually, believe it or not, able to reach the scatter shots over the wall. So we can actually reach them from that compartment. The flame flinger is clearing out this side. Now with this attack strategy, I actually prefer to have the siege barracks, just because you get that constant flow of Pekka and wizards following out, followed by whatever your troops are. But well, we didn't have that. I didn't think to bring a siege barracks with me. So that's a lesson to be learned. Try and have a bit of an assortment of siege machines when you come into these attacks with so Flame Flinger, I'd recommend having the um, a Log Launcher, uh, Siege Barracks, and perhaps a Blimp as well. Maybe that could be used for a Town Hall takedown. Anyway, we've done a great job of our Queen Charge. We've taken out all of that. The Flame Flinger's taken out all of that. So the Hogs have got a nice path to run through. They did actually struggle a little bit through this base. And that's mainly because all these skeletons popped up and held my RC in place and stopped her from being able to uh, to support with the hero takedowns. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter. We're still three, so whatever. But the RC does still help. She's getting there eventually. She's helping with these skeletons, but unfortunately moves into range of the defending RC. Does she? Is it the defending RC that finishes her? Or am I just making things up? Yes, it is. There we go. Defending RC moves in while the RC is stuck with a ton of skeletons. So that is a hazard that you can face. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of surprised that we had so many ground skeletons in this base with uh, the current meta being all about air spam. To see so many ground skeletons seems like this base has not been well thought out. 
happens to be really good against what I'm doing, but uh, it won't be good against most people's attacks. But anyway, our hogs are all gone. Sadly, because of those skeletons, we have lost our RC as well, so rip the RC. But we do have our queen up, we have our king up, and we have, of course, a three star. We're just going to clutch up the last few structures. The multi is going to go down. The king, of course, has still got his yak, so he's getting through these walls with ease. And the multi's gone, and the gold storage is going to go down any second now, and that is a three star. Not the cleanest hit I'm ever going to show you. I'm not going to lie, guys. But that is an example of the right way to take down this base. So again, it's it's better with a siege barracks where I dropped the flame flinger at nine o'clock. But given that we didn't have one, we improvise and it kind of works still, just maybe not as well as it would have done otherwise. All right, guys, and that is all for today's lesson on Queen Charge Hog. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button. Also, as always, I'd love it if you could tell me in the comments if you've tried this and if you had any success. And finally, guys, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do pretty much one or the other every single day, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.